Hello, and welcome to the Hardback Life, the podcast where we discuss all things book-related with a nice drink in hand. I'm Brittany, and I'm joined with my co-host, Michelle. Hi, thanks for joining us, guys. Um, Brittany and I are so excited to start this adventure. Um, her and I have been lifelong friends for nearly half our life, and we really enjoy reading books at the same time and having in-depth discussions of them. So one day, Brittany said, hey, let's start a podcast where we can talk about the books. So we've decided we will. Um, we're going to do two parts. We're going to do one where we review the book without spoilers. And part two, we'll go into the details of the book. You know, what did we think about a certain plot twist, things like that. Um, that way, if you haven't read the book and you don't want to be spoiled, you don't have to listen to part two. Um, but once you do read the book, you can listen to our part two and see if you agree or disagree with our thoughts and feelings on the book. Yeah. And um, although we are located on opposite sides of the world, we make sure to keep in touch and have our discussions over a cup of coffee or wine, what, whatever fits our mood while our kids are preoccupied. These conversations are important for us. This allows us to maintain our friendship and just, you know, connect with each other, even though we're so far apart. It's really important for us, even despite, you know, the distance. I know we went from being roommates, you know, and then living close together and then being a couple states away to then, okay, now we're on opposite sides of the world, you know, and yeah. a lot of people <laughs> would let those, those friendships fizzle, but, you know, and there have been times where Brittany and I, you know, we won't talk to each other for a length of time, but that's just because we're busy. We're moms. We work full time. Life, I mean, life. Yeah. But we still like make it a priority to you know stay in contact and do the stuff so we're so happy to share this hobby together and um just really connect on a literature level um and kind of share our likes and dislikes of it because we definitely have opposite tastes in books uh you know and things like that and our reading styles <laughs> and things like that I mean there are books that we obviously love together but you know yeah. there's some that and there's some are that more really your taste <laughs> Uh, you know, I do notice that you and I tend to hate the same books, um, but we don't always tend to <laughs> love the same books, which is funny. Um, so, you know, we'll go into a little bit more of those details there. Um, but for today's episode, we will be discussing the um, wonderful novel um, by Rachel Gillig. It's called One Dark Window. Um, so I had never heard of this book. I actually got this book as a birthday present from my sister, Noelle. And she said, hey, everybody's talking about this book. Everybody loves it. You have to read this. Like I bought myself a copy too and this and that. And I said, oh, okay, great. And Brittany and I had already discussed that we were going to start this podcast. And we were trying to figure out what was the first book that we would discuss. And I let her know, hey, my sister bought me this for my birthday, which my birthday came out maybe about a month or so, month, month and a half after the book. So very close. Um, and I told her about it. She said, okay, that sounds like really cool. Yeah, let's start with that. And she went and she bought it. She finished the book before I did. <laughs> like, <laughs> way before I did. Um, and it's a, it's a great book. Um, so we'll go into those details and everything. I'm going to let Brittany kind of take over give a little bit more details of what the book's about and kind of go from there. Yeah, that's right. So let's get started by giving a synopsis of the book. So Elspeth needs more than just a luck on her side. You know, she lives in this kind of eerie mislocked home. Um, it's cursed. It's there's methods that need to happen in order for this curse to be broken. And she relies on this monster known as the nightmare as an, it's an ancient spirit trapped in her head. Um, it protects her obviously because it's in, within her head. So it needs to survive. Right. But mm -hmm. she has to keep this a, a secret. And the more she uses the, him to protect her, the more she kind of loses herself. And this is the price that she has to pay. So Elspeth's life takes a drastic turn when she meets this mysterious highwayman on the forest road. She's drawn into a world of shadows and deception as she joins uh, a dangerous quest to cure the kingdom, you know, of this magical infection. Um, the highwayman turns out to be the king's nephew, um, and he's also the captain of the Destriers. And 
of course, with him aiding her, this is essentially guilty of high treason with, you know, their laws and everything. Yeah. So uh, together, Elspeth and the highway, highwaymen have um, him tell the solstice to gather these 12 Providence cards, which are the key to this cure. However, um, as the stakes rise and their attraction intensifies, Elspeth is forced to confront her her darkest secret and, you know, the nightmare and um, what she's capable of doing with this ability she obtained. Um, the nightmare is slowly taking over her mind and she may not be able to stop him. Yeah, it. I think that's a great synopsis. Um, the back of the book, you know, it doesn't do it justice. I feel like it. It, it kind of says like, "Oh, this is what about," but it doesn't really tell you how amazing. It gives you kind of a little piece of it. It's literally mm-hmm. like a crumb. <laughs> so I read the back of the book, and I'm like, okay, it doesn't really give me much, but okay. I mean, it sounds good. The the cover is intriguing. Um, you know, everyone else says it's great, so I'll read it. And I I feel that the uh the sun the synopsis on the back is very very mild so what Brittany uh Brittiana shared with you is a little bit more detailed synopsis without obviously giving anything away um so wonder is a town and or a kingdom I would say it's a kingdom um it, it appears right. that the story is taking place in the 18th century um uh, middle ages and there is this mist that surrounds the town in the forest hence our backgrounds they kind of remind us of the book <laughs> um and <laughs> these people they cannot leave um the, you know the mist essentially keeps them trapped there um we'll go into details in part two about like what the mist does and things like that and how it keeps them trapped um but just know for the sake of you know the review it's a crucial part of the story um and it's kind of what makes the story you know what is this mist you know how did it get there right. does it ever go away things like that um, the one thing I really loved that Rachel did in the books is that each chapter starts with a rhyme and the rhyme sets the tone for the entire chapter. So just by reading it, you're like, oh, okay, that's interesting, you know, and, and oh, it plays, it sounds like, you know, this, oh, right. Yeah. Like how they communicate and how he is kind of pushing her in these secretive directions without really really revealing anything to her and it kind of keeps it, everything a little bit of a mystery and you're yeah. not really quite sure what he is wanting and when Brittany says he she means the nightmare <laughs> so that's the, the nightmare he says a rhyme he speaks in riddles and rhymes um he's not a cut and dry just oh you ask him a question he gives you an answer no he's going to answer in a riddle mm-hmm. rhyme and it's up to you to figure out what he's talking about um so it's wonderful i've never seen an author do that now i'm pretty sure there are other authors who've done it i've just never read a book where it's been done um and the book is um from elspeth's point of view so it's not one of those books where it's going to jump and you're going to read it from another character's point of view it is elspeth's point of view you follow her 100 percent. she's the main character um and her character i think is she she grew on me um and i know Brittany, you agree with me that she starts off a little slow. So if you read the book and the first few chapters, you're like, yeah, hey, this it, is not exciting. Stick with it. It gets really good. I was worried in like the beginning. Like, I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't, I wasn't sure what to expect because I was a little worried. I was like, oh gosh, this is starting out really slow. I don't know if I, if it's like this the whole time, I, I'm probably not going to be able to finish it, but yeah. she ended up, you know, creating this world. Um, and I think she created um, something different. I know quests and, you know, that whole gothic quest fantasy has been done before. But the way that she plays into these Providence cards on this world she's creating, um, I don't think you can necessarily predict what's going to happen. Whereas other books, it, you kind of already know what's expected. Yeah, e- exactly. And I don't, I know it's kind of labeled as a gothic fantasy, you know, novel, but I really wouldn't well, call romance, it I know the title was yeah. on there was, you know, a, a gothic romance, which I would <laughs> use that loosely. Yes. I mean, it's middle ages, so I wouldn't necessarily say it's gothic, right? It's middle ages. Yes, there's magic in it, but it's not magic the like Harry Potter magic. magic. 
yeah, it's not magic like, oh, they're going to a school and it's all witches and wizards or, you know, thing like that. Like, it, it's not like that. It's not like the Netflix series, you know, the, the School of Good and Evil. Nothing like that. <laughs> Nothing like that. Um, you know, it is just more of a middle ages and there just happens to be, you know, magic and um, that some people um, have. And in our in-depth discussion in part two, we'll go over that in more detail and, and everything. So we don't want to spoil the book from you. Um, it is a wonderful book. There's lots of great surprises, twists and turns. Um, how the book ends, I ne- or, you know, because there's, I, I never thought it would end that way. <laughs> we'll just say that. There's, it's a part of a duology. So there will be a second part called Two Twisted Crowns. And the author did not leave it on like a major cliffhanger. Like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? I have to wait till October 2023 to hear the rest. I mean, she ended it on a good note. And then you're like, ooh, okay. Where is this going? In part two? You know, well, just- and it also ended in a way I don't think we were expecting, which is good. Oh. So it could go in different ways, but I think it's, st- uh, it's setting a, it's opening it up for a lot of possibilities, oh, yeah. a lot of explanations. And um, it could go anyway. So, you know, I get you won't know until you read it. Um, but I, she's really kind of just paved the way for this world she's created. Oh, yeah. she She's definitely set it up, right? Um, one thing I dislike is when authors, you know, leave a book on a cliffhanger and you have to wait a year or two for it. And it's like a major cliffhanger, right? Like, oh. Is this person dead or alive? And then also, even even when they do that or it ends and the second yeah. book ends up being just a retelling of that same story, just in a different yeah. setting, and it ends the exact same way and it's just a repeat. Like, hopefully, I don't expect that to be like that at all. Yeah. I don't think he's shaped book one to go in a book two like that at all. Um, yeah. I think that there's still a lot for us to find out about really um the history behind it um you know probably what we more backgrounds into certain individuals that maybe weren't told in the story that have provide a lot of more explanation onto why things are the way they are and why it operates the way it does and why people are affected the way that they are um hopefully yeah. we find out <laughs> I, right I, I kind of feel like how the book was written is like maybe she wrote the whole entire story and it was super long and she decided you know what let's make it two parts and let's cut it like right, right. Now, you know like let let's leave a nice little a little you know you almost had it you almost it's had it um <laughs> <laughs> it's like that that what was it Geico commercial or Allstate or whatever it is um you know it's <laughs> like you're right there you know but it's in, it's in a good way. You know, I mean, it makes you so excited to like yeah. pre-order it once you can. Like I will pre-order it. And Rachel, if you ever watch this, I wish you had a hardback because <laughs> you have paperbacks <laughs> and I want a hardback of this book so bad. Um, I have the audio edition. I have the Kindle edition and I have the paperback. So I have three versions of your book. <laughs> um, one was a gift and two was just because. Uh, so kind of moving along. Um, what do you think of the voice narrator for the audiobook? So I know we've talked about this before. Narrators can make or break how that story is told and if you enjoy it. And it could really ruin, even when you go back to read that paper copy of a book, it could really ruin yeah. it. Um, I think she did a great job. I think she portrayed the characters really well. I think she her tone and the way that she carried on with the story was spot on. Um, I have no complaints whatsoever. Um, Of course, I tend to do more audiobooks than you do just because life, it's easier for me. But I I enjoyed her. I think she did a good job. Um, I liked it. I have no complaints. Definitely. And, you know, let me pull up who the narrator is. Um, I absolutely adore her. I think she did a wonderful job of portraying Mm -hmm. the emotions of the characters I love how and the multi characters that are in it. Yes, and I love how she did um, different voices. So, you know, if it was, you know, a guy, she would kind of make her voice a little bit more raspy. So it's supposed to be someone mm-hmm. younger. She would try to sound younger. Um, it was great. I'm here on this thing. I'm like, where is this? 
narrative. Well, I know that, you know, we've in previous audiobooks that I've had, I told you, I said, I couldn't even listen to it because it was so monotone. It was so dry. And it was a book that was fast paced and full of action. And then it just kind of killed the whole thing. So when I went back and I. (laughs) Yeah. And I know exactly which series you're talking about because I just finished that. And I listened to about two minutes of the audiobook and I was like, I'm done. I can't. I can't. She's not reading the character right. She was reading this character's very monotone and this character is very fast paced, spunky, um, super energetic. And she was, oh, and then I did this. Yeah, I can't stand when narrators do that. Um, but the narrator of this is Lisa. I don't want to butcher her last name, but Cord Leon. And she is amazing. I, 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 it, it's added more depth to the story for me because I read the book first and now I'm listening to the audiobook. And it's, you know, um adding just another layer to it so you you will you can't go wrong with either version um kindles do these amazing things where you can even read the book and play the audiobook at the same time and you can read along the book while listening so i do that a lot of times um just because some characters may have unique names and i'm not sure if i'm you know pronouncing them right in my mind and so the narrator helps right super right. wonderful i think you guys will love it um, I highly recommend the book. Um, it, it was a joy to read. It's not like other books I've read before. So that's what I really loved is it wasn't a romance novel. It wasn't an action book. Right. So I think on that note, I think it's important to note that it's not, don't expect it to be a monster maiden type of romance. I don't think that that's going to be the direction that it's going. Um, don't quote me on this, but I want to say that I thought, um, I'm pretty sure the author came out and said that it wasn't. So it was put out there that, you know, there, there's a lot of preconceived notions that it is going to be this monster romance and she didn't want that expectation out there. Okay. Your audio did cut out for a minute. So we didn't get the part of the monster maiden, but I know exactly where you're going. Uh, some people think it's a monster maiden story that, you know, Elspeth and the Nightmare, it's like a entangled love story. Okay, that's that's not it, you guys. Don't go into it thinking it's like a Beauty and the Beast type of thing, because that's not it. It's not a great And I wouldn't go tale. into the story <laughs> in general. I wouldn't go into this book with uh, expectations of something in mind, don't go into it with any expectations at all. Yeah. Go, um, cause you're, if, if you're, if you go into it expecting some, uh, a trope that's already been out there, uh, you know, your typical Gothic fantasy romance for, uh, you know, adult fantasy or something, it's not going to be that type of trope. And yeah, so it's, yeah, it's not a, it's not a romance novel, you guys. It's, you know, it's not. So don't go in thinking. I, I know, wouldn't classify it. You might have a sliver of something in there, but I think it's pretty juvenile. I, uh, yeah, I, I would say uh, it's safe to say that this book is definitely a teen and above. Um, I know Brittany has a preteen and I'm pretty sure she would let her preteen read the book. It is, there's no vulgarity, which I think is wonderful. Uh, Rachel is really good about expressing emotions without the use of crude language, which not a lot of the authors can do that right or or just choose to do that um and she does that wonderfully yeah I mean yeah I mean I I know there's some areas I would definitely have her skip over (laughs) but for the most part I mean the I mean yeah I mean what like a, a paragraph to be honest like a paragraph it was it was nothing yeah yeah it was not yeah it was literally I think a paragraph and that's it. But other than that, if, I think if it's, that, it's, if that, yeah, it's a pretty tame book. Um, so if you do have teens that are looking to read something that's a little bit um, gothic, quote unquote, fantasy, you can definitely do that. A little bit more middle ages, I think it's great. Um, you've got your heroine type of character. You know, you've got your villains. You know, it, it it's really neat in that, but it doesn't push the marker like a lot of a lot of authors, and it is suitable for I would say teens and above. Um, and I think that's yeah. pretty much it, you guys. Um, we don't want to go into too much detail because we're gonna do a part two. So in part two, 
Brittany and I are going to discuss in details the story. So there will be major spoilers. If you do not want to be spoiled, don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, so if you don't want to know anything about these Providence cards, the characters, what's happening, maybe um, what we expect might happen, even details uh, you know, that have occurred. If you don't want to hear anything, don't listen. <laughs> no, or no, I, don't even listen because that's going to be a separate video, but <laughs> we're going to end right. this video right here. <laughs> we'll we'll not get to this don't, podcast right listen here. Listen to this one, just don't listen to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So don't have your auto playlist set, is, is what we're trying to say. Turn yeah. your auto playlist <laughs> off, whether you're watching us on YouTube or you're listening to us too on your podcast service. Um, turn your auto off stop playing us if you do not want to be spoiled if you have it set up for auto we can't help you there <laughs> um right. but if you have read the book and you want to just kind of see what other you know book nerds think of it then please watch it um you know we're always open for dialogue um we will post links in our instagram um to have open discussions once these videos are posted please feel free to let us know your thoughts on the books and if you have any recommendations that we should you know read review and discuss so yeah with that said yeah, yeah. we'll catch you in the next episode <laughs> yeah until then <laughs> <laughs> all right bye you guys we'll see you next time bye